So good afternoon, and thank you all for being here today. My name is Sarah Waring, and I am the State Director for USDA Rural Development for the states of Vermont and New Hampshire. We're here today to announce the launch of a program funded by rural development through a cooperative agreement. For the past eight or nine months, rural development has been working alongside partners at the state and within the governor's office to identify the gaps still needed to assist Vermont for our long-term recovery from July's flooding and to be able to handle our next disaster more effectively and more efficiently. I'm honored to be here with an incredibly thoughtful and gracious and collaborative group of people, our congressional delegates, our state leadership, and one of our service providers who represents our towns and communities here in this state. Before I introduce our first speaker, I'd like to just take a moment to describe the source of this funding for the program that we are launching. Vermont is one of only four states in the country that will receive funding for post-disaster technical assistance. The source of this funding is our Disaster Assistance Fund, which is a holding account. Any remaining unspent funds that our agency has over the years from Congress's supplemental disaster spending bills accumulates in this fund. The Secretary of USDA, Thomas Vilsack, has the authority to utilize these funds with broad flexibility. And he has chosen Vermont, Hawaii, New Mexico, and Puerto Rico to pilot these technical assistance post-disaster models. I'm thrilled that our state is receiving these funds, and I take it as a sign that the Biden-Harris administration is committed to helping rural America. We know that we need creativity on the ground and in our leadership to support our communities, and we also know that no problem is the same across our country. We also know that rural development can be a lifetime partner for small communities. But when those communities don't have the capacity to access funding, we fail in our mission. This program will increase the capacity of municipalities to use our funding and to use other federal agency funding, like FEMA, EPA, EDA, DOT, and HUD. My job today is mostly as master of ceremony, so I'm going to stop talking. And what I would like to do is to introduce our first speaker, uh, the Honorable Senator Peter Welch. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sarah. I am really thrilled to be here with my colleague, uh, Congresswoman Ballot. Uh, we've, we've had a hard couple of weeks, and it's good to have you here in Vermont. And it's been great working with you on this. Uh, and under Secretary Gooden, it's really wonderful to be with you. Um, we had a chance to meet. I get to vote yes or no on whether you get your job. <laughs> so he paid attention to me for a little bit. And <laughs> But here he is helping us out, and we're really grateful. And you were uh, in Sarah's job uh, yes. in Virginia. Yes. So, you, you know, it's, he's on the ground and really has knowledge about the needs locally and how best to make that, uh, to, to meet those needs. So I'm delight, uh, delighted to have you. And, of course, Senator Sanders has worked with us uh, hand in glove. And I can't believe the work you're doing, Doug. We really appreciate you and the governor and all that you've done. Uh, and of course, Ted, who's going to play a major role in what's happening. Um, what we're here to talk about has to do with the floods and the disaster. And uh, as I travel around, and actually I'm in Washington, my colleagues ask about the floods in July. And of course, we had that freeze in May as well that hurt a lot of our farmers. They say, how's Vermont doing? And it is always a struggle for me to figure out how best to answer that. Because for most of Vermont, um, you know, it was a trauma when that happened in July. But for most of Vermont, we're moving on. And the infrastructure is largely repaired. People are doing well. Uh, we're back to our jobs. We're back to our families. But if it was your, if it was your home, if it was your farm, if it was your business, it is really, really, really tough. Uh, in just a couple of weeks ago, we took a tour, walking tour in Barrie, where they got hammered, a uh, town just a little south of where we are, uh, Mr. Secretary. And I was there visiting with some folks whose homes have been flooded, and they're still sort of in a state of limbo. And 
This is Barry I'm speaking about because it's a really good example. Those homes and some of the businesses there are just still a long way from where they were. There's some uncertainty. And Barry has this extraordinary volunteer community who's been helping from day one. But they don't have people there who have the experience, fortunately, of having to do massive recovery. And all of our small towns are in that. You know, storms are coming more often than they should, but we don't have town governments that are set up to have in place the infrastructure, administrative infrastructure, to be able to respond uh, to the disaster. And part of that response is down the line, after FEMA has come and gone, to be able to navigate a lot of the, very, of the, the various federal programs that are out there. And it's, a, it's not a realistic expectation that a town like Barry would have folks who were dedicated to that when hopefully what happens is a rare, not a constant event. So I am, uh, the, technical, the technical services that are going to be provided uh, under this uh, program that has been approved by uh, the U.S. Department of Agriculture means that the Barrys of Vermont, uh, the Westons of Vermont, uh, the Ludlows of Vermont, uh, the Johnsons of Vermont, uh, many of these towns that got just so clobbered are going to be able to count on getting uh, technical assistance. And this is building on something that the state did with the uh, technical assistance program the legislature passed and the governor signed, where we want to have that capacity for a state that has volunteers, for our communities that have volunteers to get the technical assistance that is something that is only going to be made available through this uh, technical assistance grant. So, you know, I, we really do appreciate this. It makes a difference, and it makes a difference for the folks who are still dealing with the real challenges of getting their house back together or getting in the buyout or getting their business back together uh, or uh, trying to get their farm back in production. So this is extremely important, and it's an indication to me that the U.S. Department of Agriculture has remembered us, has not forgotten us, and that's the Vermonters who need help. Uh, and it's a whole all on all hands on deck kind of situation. The governor has been totally involved. Doug, the work you've done, we're so grateful for. Congressional delegation uh, working uh, closely together. But this is really, at the end of the day, all about getting Vermonters who got hammered back in their homes, get their business up and running. Uh, and get those farms back in production. So uh, I'm just very, very happy about this response and what this means for uh, those folks who are still uh, reeling from what happened in July with this flood. So thank you very much. Thank you, Senator. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce Representative Becca Ballant, uh, who loves this state and cares deeply and has a very hard job. Please, Becca. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. You know, my, uh, my staff is getting sick of me saying it, but I often say Vermont is held together with duct tape twine and thousands of volunteer hours uh, in, in each community, and that's true. And we know in Vermont how to come together in towns um, and, and communities across the state when disaster strikes. But no matter how much heart and spirit and hard work you, you dedicate to the problem, it's not going to solve the connection problems you have when you don't have the capacity, when you don't have the technical assistance on the ground. And I'm so excited about this project because it is connecting the dots between rural Vermont, rural Hawaii, Rural is rural. That's what I continue to say to my colleagues within my caucus and across the aisle. It doesn't matter if you're in Kentucky or Texas or rural Wisconsin, Vermont. The struggles are similar. And when disaster strikes, those small towns, those communities need help to access the funds that are available to them to the federal government. And we have seen this. Um, of, of course, everybody who has sought help from our office, and I'm sure uh, both the senators have been, their offices have been fielding many calls as well. And 
it isn't enough to have the money available at the federal level. If you can't access it, if you don't have the technical assistance, if you don't have the capacity, you're not going to be able to turn that money around and really make a difference for the lives of people uh, in your community. The other thing I want to say is this. When I was coming in, um, it was so nice, so nice to see old friends. And we were talking about how we're at a really hard time across this country in terms of, of people not being able to come together and solve problems together. That there's so much rancor and rage. And we have an opportunity when government actually works to ameliorate some of that tension, some of that frustration and feeling like people are getting left behind. So I see it as a much larger mission. It is about helping communities and towns. It is about individuals. It's about farms. And it's about bringing people back together and making them whole. But in a larger sense, it is about really investing in the democracy. And when programs work, we do that. We signal to people that government is there to help. And so I'm very proud to have the job that I have to serve Vermont in this capacity and to work with this incredibly hardworking group of people, um, all of whom I know, except for Under Secretary Gooden, who I just met, and I'm so excited that um, just hearing what Sarah was saying, you have already been able to put your know-how into action and have made a tremendous impact, it sounds like, in a very short amount of time. So thank you so much for the attention and for being here today. And know that, you know, as, as Vermonters, if, if you're watching this, this group of people is making sure that Vermonters get what is due to them when disaster strikes. So thank you so much. Thank you, Congresswoman. Next, I would like to introduce Haley Perro from Senator Sanders' office. Too bad he couldn't join us, but you are um, a fabulous intermediary for him. Thank you, Haley. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, my name is Haley Perro. I am Senator Sanders' Outreach Director, and I'm so pleased to be with you here today. When I went out and spoke to small towns, and when the Senator did the same, uh, I heard the same as what we all probably heard. People were just overwhelmed. It can be hard to be a small town, uh, even in good times, but when a disaster hits and you have to deal with immediate response, recovery, and think about resiliency, it can really all feel like too much. And Senator Sanders believes, as I'm sure you all agree, that all our communities, regardless of their size, really deserve a fair shake, and they need fair access to federal resources. And that's why he's so pleased to hear about today's funding announcement, and he's glad to see the Biden-Harris administration's commitment to rural America. On behalf of the Senator, I'd like to thank our national and local leadership at USDA for bringing these funds to Vermont. It's really an example, as I was looking at USDA Rural Development's mission, um, an example of what USDA does best, uh, making sure rural America doesn't get left behind and making sure there's a high quality of life and strong economies. And I'd also like to thank the partners who will be doing the hard work with municipalities, helping them continue the recovery and also putting them on better footing for what we unfortunately know will be the inevitable next disaster and making sure um, that they are working really hand in hand with them um, as trusted partners. Uh, we know that uh, this will be really crucial to Vermont's overall recovery. It'll help all towns. We'll lift all boats if our small towns recover. So again, want to thank USDA for this commitment. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. Now, it's a very short flight from Washington, D.C. to Vermont. It's about an hour and a half, but when you're delayed by an hour, you begin to get nervous about whether or not you make the press conference. I want to say that um, our Undersecretary for USDA Rural Development uh, knows what it's like to live and work in rural America. Um, he has been a state director himself in the state of Virginia, uh, and he really believes in the work that we do in the field. Uh, and those of us, my colleagues across the country who have my job, are all so excited that he is now our new undersecretary. I also want to say I don't think I've ever seen this man lose his cool, uh, which is very impressive given the job that he has in Washington, D.C. So it's my honor to introduce Dr. Basil Gooden, undersecretary for rural development. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sarah. Really appreciate that introduction. Um, I want to personally thank uh, Senator Welch and Senator Saunders' office 
Uh, and certainly, Congresswoman Ballant, thank you so much for your support and the work that you do, not only in rural Vermont, but your commitment to rural America. Uh, I had the opportunity to speak with Senator Welch uh, on a couple of occasions, but when I initially met him, we really had deep conversations about what is needed, not only in Vermont, but what is needed in rural America. And so I really appreciated the conversation and really appreciate your support of uh, my candidates, candidacy for this position. So thank you for your vote and uh, really do appreciate the support and the great work. I am just honored to be back here in Vermont. Actually, I've been here several times. Um, I um, actually uh, <laughs> work with this gentleman, uh, Ted Brady, here uh, when he was a state director uh, back in the Obama administration. Uh, but also, my daughter found her way to Vermont to find her husband from Vermont. And so yeah. I've uh, been here. Uh, your so, is what you're telling exactly. Me. I feel right at home. I feel like family right here in Vermont. But uh, delighted, delighted to be here. Also want to thank the governor's office uh, for his support of uh, this initiative, what we're doing here today, and his uh, commitment to uh, Vermont and rural Vermont as well. I, and, and thank you so much, Ted Brady, for, for your tremendous work as a partner, a collaborator in the work that we're doing here today. I'm just delighted to announce that uh, USDA Rural Development uh, is making available uh, a $1 million uh, grant, actually, agreement to actually, through from their disaster assistance fund, to really address uh, some of the needs uh, as, as we see them here in Vermont. And what is really uh, very interesting about this funding, this disaster assistance fund funding that, that's coming to Vermont, it took innovation, it took creativity uh, to really make this work. And really that is what's needed in government if we are to address the issues and the concerns that we see across rural America. It's going to take innovation. It's going to take creativity. It's going to take boldness to really say, how can we make our programs meet the needs of these rural areas? Right now, we have a, a, a vast array of programs in, in USDA rural development that can do some tremendous good in rural areas across the country. But oftentimes, those programs don't align nicely with the needs in rural America. And so I am so delighted that Sarah Warren and Ted at Senator Welch's office, Congresswoman Ballant's office, and the governor's office came together and said, we can find a way to work together to align the need with the program that exists. And so that's what it's going to take for us to make changes across rural America. It's going to take innovation, creativity. I'm so glad that we're a small part of the innovation and creativity that's taking part uh, here, taking place here today. That's what we're about. We're excited about the work we do at USDA Rural Development. We're here to serve rural America. And what I've seen and what I've heard certainly related to the disaster that uh, took place here last year and the recovery, I'm, I'm so reminded of, uh, I, as Sarah indicated, I'm a farmer. I, uh, we have a, a beef cattle farm in, in central Virginia. I live about an hour away from my farm but I go up there every weekend. I love being up there. In 2018, I got a phone call in the middle of the night saying, hey, it was from the Sheriff's Department in my hometown of Buckingham County, Virginia, saying, hey, there's been a car accident in front of your farm. The driver is OK, but there, there are uh, gaping holes in the fence line. And please come up here and fix the fence line before we have a, a road full of cattle. And so it took me about 45 minutes that night actually to get from out of bed and, and up there to get there to, uh, to my farm. But when I got there, there were about 30 people that were already there. They had already fixed the fence line. And, and so I was just awed because uh, the people were of different races, different religions, different political persuasions than, than I am neighbors, friends, and people that I didn't even know. But they, they were there. They had already fixed it, already patched the fence line. And what that spoke to me is that's the essence and spirit of rural America. It may have been my hometown, 
But I see that work here in Vermont, hearing the stories about the recovery, the work that people are doing to help each other across Vermont. They're coming together, and that's what rural people do. And, and I'm just so delighted to see that here in Vermont, but to see that across rural America as well. Because we're here to support each other, to, to, to share in each other's successes, but also step and try to help people step up uh, in, their, in, in some challenging times as well. So again, thank you for allowing USDA Rural Development to be a small part of this creativity, innovation, and boldness that's taking place here in Vermont. Anything that we can do at USDA Rural Development, please don't hesitate to contact us in Washington, D.C., or Sarah Warren, outstanding state director here in Vermont. So thank you again for this opportunity. Glad to be here today. Thank you. Thank you, Undersecretary. Thank you. Speaking of hard jobs, uh, my, our next speaker, um, I don't, I'm not sure that he ever sleeps, uh, or if he does, it's probably in very small pockets of time, because he's everywhere all the time during this long recovery. And I see him on every phone call that I'm on, and I'm sure he's on 100 more, and we see him in the State House, and we see him out in the field working directly with the people who are impacted. Um, it's been my honor and privilege to work alongside him to figure out how to make this money fit the needs that we currently have and not duplicate, not be redundant, not be something that someone else is already doing. Um, I believe that Doug has his finger on the pulse of what most people in Vermont are doing at this point in time, and I am very excited uh, to have him explain a little bit more about how this will work. So Doug Farnham. Thank you, Sarah. So I do want to say, <clears throat> It wasn't even that long after the water actually receded that, that Sarah had reached out to me trying to come up with ways that USDA Rural Development could help. Um, and from very early on as well, working with Ted Brady, working with Katie Buckley, I think that state federal local partnership, that collaboration from day one, not the feds telling the state what to do and the states telling the towns what to do, but how can we all work together? How can we really solve these problems? is the, the key to any measure of success. Um, I think we have a lot of work to do related to recovery, and I personally will have trouble ever feeling like I've succeeded. I think there's always more work to do. We can always do better at recovery. Um, but maybe 10 years down the road, I'll be able to look back and feel like we've, we've done the right thing for the families that were impacted, and we've tried to make things better for the next time around. And that's, I think, the best you can hope for. I'd like to thank the congressional delegation for constantly fighting for Vermont, constantly trying to remind people of um, the impacts of the floods. I think, uh, you know, with, with the environment we're living in nowadays, it's very easy for people to be shocked by something, to feel it, and then to move on. And it's almost immediately in the rearview mirror. But the people that are dealing with those impacts, the people that lost their homes, the people that still have to figure out whether or not they're going to rebuild or, or need to move away, they're still doing that in Vermont. We still have people that, because of Vermont's short construction season, we're just now getting back into an opportunity for some people to fix their homes. There were five months where they couldn't do anything. They couldn't work on their homes, and they had to find some place up to live. We actually lost several hundred Vermonters because they had no place to live in Vermont and had to move out of state, which is, uh, being a lifelong Vermonter except for my military service, that is, that is extremely disheartening. I would never want to see someone move away from the state, much less if they had no choice in the matter and really just could not find a place to live. So again, it's been almost a year, and I wanted to just highlight a couple things there. The 2023 floods did over a billion dollars of damage. When you consider, you know, we throw down around billions and trillions all the time, but when you consider we only have 640,000 people in Vermont, that's a lot of damage for, for a small state. So proportionally, a billion dollars is a significant event for us. It's more than we suffered under, after Tropical Storm Irene. And I think that story stuck with us for longer because we were living in a different environment when Irene happened. So I just want to remind people, the amount of damage out there, the amount of damage we're still fixing, it's significant. The infrastructure, most of the temporary patches, everything looks fixed, but in many cases, the permanent repairs and mitigation haven't been done yet. 
because we're still working through the process to do that work. And most of the municipalities, uh, out of the $600 million of estimated damage, we only have about $40 million that's actually reached the stage where it's scoped and fully defined for projects. So we have a massive amount of work for our towns that they have to do over the next couple of years. And, and this project will be, this million dollars from USDA will be extremely valuable in helping the towns navigate that, helping the towns access it, and making sure that they're getting the right amount of fee assistance from FEMA or from other disaster relief programs. It's critical in helping us succeed over the next several years. We also have $600 million of ARPA funds, which again, very grateful to the congressional delegation for those ARPA state fiscal recovery funds. We're still spending $600 million there, which again, for Vermont, for additional one-time funding, that is a very large amount. And most of that money is in the municipal sector and involves the towns. And they're great projects, they're water, sewer, housing, they're all things we need in Vermont so that the next time we flood, we don't see people without a place to live. We see that we have enough housing. We see that we have water systems that don't end up polluting the lake because they, were, they didn't have the appropriate safety and mitigation measures in place. So I do think we have a great opportunity in front of us, and this million dollars is gonna be extremely valuable in maximizing that opportunity. It's gonna result in far more than a million dollars of benefit to Vermonters. I wouldn't be surprised if it's in the tens, twenties, thirty million dollars that, that this money really helps us unlock and helps us use properly. And also makes it easier on the state and federal programs because when people all are on the same page and we actually have the resources and the time to make sure everyone understands, things just go so much smoother and um, it's easier for, for those smaller communities to participate. Vermonters are reasonable, but if you just tell us something and you don't explain it to us, I don't think you can expect us to go along with it. We need to understand and we need to agree. So I think that's part of the concept here is that we need to go out and give people the skills, give people the tools, and they will be able to participate in those programs. So I think the last thing I'd like to say, I just reiterate my gratitude from the governor's office, from myself personally, having gone out to all the communities that were flooded, having seen, you know, working, trying to work with the hundreds of people that are still trying to find permanent solutions in Vermont. Every little bit helps. And a million dollars is more than a little bit. So we really appreciate that this is an innovative, collaborative, and creative approach. And it really is meeting Vermonters where they are and not telling Vermonters where they have to be. And I think that is a huge difference in approach that is really heartening and um, makes me really proud to be part of the effort. So thank you. Thank you, Doug. Um, last, I would like to introduce Ted Brady, who is at the Vermont League of Cities and Towns, who will be our cooperator in this work. Um, and one thing I'd like to say before I welcome Ted to the podium um, is just that the League of Cities and Towns, like many of our other service providers across the state, see both some of our systemic issues and challenges and the current and urgent needs that relate to our municipal and community capacity. And that's one of the reasons we're so excited to work with Ted, with Katie Buckley, with Bonnie Wanager, with the team at the League, um, because they are constantly articulating to us, this isn't just a short-term issue. Many of these challenges are longer-term systemic issues that we need to be able to begin to turn the needle, turn the compass rows on. And so with that, Ted, I'm gonna welcome you. Awesome. Thanks so much. Uh, to go on, uh, to continue uh, Dr. Gooden, Secretary Gooden's analogy of the fence, here in Vermont, when our fence gets broken like a flood, it's not just our neighbors that show up, our senator shows up, our senators show up, their staff, our congresswomen show up, our state director, our governor, everyone shows up to mend that fence. And that's what's been happening for the last nine months, six months. You know, they, they literally have shown up and then they call us and say, are you sure the fence is holding up? What else do you need? Because I have some money in DC I could try to find for you. And that's what's happening today. So why is it happening? Uh, it's happening because the, within hours of the flooding starting, VLCT started getting phone calls and emails saying, um, what do we do about time and materials and FEMA and contracts? And can I hire this guy to drive the dump truck over? They were really 
in the weeds questions. Uh, my, what, what account do I pay for? These are ridiculous questions, right? But they're the questions that people need to ask and they don't have the answers to because we're, you know, uh, thousands, more than 5,000 municipal officials running this state. What uh, Representative Balance said, this place is held up by duct tape in thousands of volunteer hours and they don't always have all the answers. Our hope is that this grant is gonna give them some of those answers. Clerks, treasurers, select board members, trustees are going to have new resources that they did not have before this grant uh, to actually provide formalized training, uh, but also to provide handholding. We're gonna actually go out and have circuit riders that are meeting with these people in the field, helping them deal with the FEMA issues now in partnership with the regional planning commissions, but also building infrastructure, not physical infrastructure, but finance, operations, and management infrastructure that makes it so they don't have to ask those questions during the next flood. They know the answer, their accounting systems are in order, and they're able to get reimbursed by FEMA in a timely manner and have the confidence that when they spend money, they're gonna get uh, reimbursed for it. Uh, <clears throat> we found in the flood those municipal leaders that had good accounting in place, had good contracting policies, they were the ones that recovered more quickly. It's no secret, more than half of Vermont's municipalities don't have career uh, municipal leadership, right? A, a manager and administrator. We're going to have to provide this resource to volunteers on nights and weekends when they're listening and able to get away from you know, the shop or get away from the farm to be able to, to help them uh, with, with these issues. We're gonna hire a full-time government finance specialist, somebody that's gonna put on a multiple months long process on the details of government fund accounting. Who's excited about that? <laughs> that's the stuff people don't like to fund because it's not a shiny new object. USDA, Sarah saw this, Doug saw this, Basil saw this and said, sorry, Secretary Gooden saw this, <laughs> and said, we, we can do this, even though it's out of there, because they like to fund shiny things too. They like things that are standing behind you at a press conference, we know that. Um, that's gonna be our first task, building a course, a finance course. We also hope to hire one or two seasoned clerks and uh, municipal managers who perhaps are done with the drama of managing to go in and be a, a mentor to, um, to, to select board members, to clerks, to treasurers, go down that whole list and give them that assistance and, and be there for them to help them with FEMA paperwork, but also to help them with their general um, municipal governance uh, issues. I wanna, find, I wanna finally bring this back to something Doug said, and I know the Senator has heard this, both Senator Sanders and Senator Welch and Congressman Welch's office have heard this. Most towns in Vermont have not received a penny of FEMA money. We just received a, you know, another inquiry the other day. Uh, town has $750,000 of, uh, of damages. They know they're all eligible and FEMA's on like their sixth person coming through the revolving door. They haven't gotten them a single penny yet. That's the reality in the field, they're borrowing money. We answered 4,000 inquiries last year from towns about everything from open meeting law to, um, uh, to uh, you know, how to manage a contract. Katie Buckley, who's gonna be doing a lot of this work for us, our director of the Federal Funding Assistance Program, in the two years she's been with us, she's answered more than 2,000 inquiries about federal funding <laughs> and ARPA and the disaster. You know, this is, there is an endless supply of demand and work. So we really appreciate the funding and the support from Sarah, uh, from uh, Dr. Gooden, from the congressional delegation and the governor's office. So thank you so much. Let's get to work. Thank you, Ted. Um, I just want to end by saying how much of a privilege it is to be here and to be able to announce something like this. Uh, and how excited we are to work with a cooperator who's ready and already hitting the ground running. Uh, we had the opportunity this morning to speak with the Rural Caucus uh, from our state legislature. We've worked closely with our uh, regional planning commissions, regional economic development corporations, uh, and many of our other associations, town managers, uh, clerks and treasurers associations that will be partnering with us as we go forward. So with that, uh, I wanna say thank you to those of you who've come from the press today to join us. And I wanna say thanks again to our congressional delegation and to our undersecretary, Dr. Gooden. And we can take questions if folks have questions they'd like to pose. 
Yeah. You're all set? All set? Thank you. All right. All right. That was easy.